Judging from the comments I get on my channel, lots of people these days are interested in the possibility of through hiking a long trail in a low carb or keto diet. Well, I actually did that in 2018. I backpacked the entire 2,200 mile Appalachian Trail on a low carb diet. If you want to hear about that, stick around. Now, I've been saying for a long time that I would make a video about my backpacking diet, but I've sort of been reluctant to do it. First of all, I'm not an expert, but just someone who has spent a lot of time experimenting with diet and exercise on himself. And second, the last thing I want to do is preach when it comes to diet. Because when you get past the headlines, nutrition and exercise are very complicated subjects. I mean scientifically. And whenever anyone tells you that they have the answer that applies to everyone, well, you've got to be suspicious because mostly what we have are unproven theories and models. Some of the most basic concepts about diet and nutrition are still subject to lots of disagreement among scientists and researchers. So, with that hesitation noted, what I can do is tell you what I did myself when I threw hiked the Appalachian Trail and how I did the whole thing without eating a lot of sugar or other carbohydrates. And I can tell you what I did eat and how it made me feel and how I actually resupplied on the trail. And you should take what I have to say not as advice, but as just a single data point in your own research. My story is just anecdotal evidence that a low-carb diet can work on a long thru-hike. Anecdotal evidence can be interesting, but it is also entirely unconvincing in any debate where a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled clinical trial could be used to answer a question. But since no one is going to put together such a trial among thru-hikers, I'll barrel ahead with this video, and you can listen to my story if you want but don't consider it as something that necessarily is going to work for you or something that I'm advocating for you. Now first, my background. I've been a runner since high school and a hardcore marathoner in the decade of the 1990s when I was in my 30s. I ran eight marathons total in that decade, usually in about three hours and 30 minutes, which was typically in the top third of finishers. In those days, a high carbohydrate diet for athletes in training was not only the norm, but was also considered the only sane, safe, and healthy choice. There were no other alternatives. So high mileage, probably too much mileage compared to how people train these days, while all the while filling yourself with things like bread and pizza, ice cream, pasta, and healthy carbs too, which was what? Whole grains, fruits, vegetables, plus of course carbo-loading at the big spaghetti dinners before the big race. Carbo-loading, of course, referring to carbohydrates. Eating like that, you could get very fit, but still creep up in weight every year. That's what happened to me. But in 2007, Gary Taubes published his book, Good Calories, Bad Calories, and for the first time, I thought it might be safe for me to try a low-carb diet. I was frustrated at that point with my inability to control my weight. But the low-carb diet worked. I gave up beer and switched to vodka. I gave up bread and pasta and pizza and sugar and all the rest. That was in 2007. So when I was preparing to through hike the Appalachian Trail in 2017, I had already spent 10 years on a low carb diet with my weight under control. That was pretty much how I ate all the time, low carb, high fat, except when I was hiking long distances because there was still that little part of me left over from my marathoning days that was afraid I'd pass out or something if I paired low carb with high miles. So as I prepared for the Appalachian Trail, I wasn't sure how I was going to approach my diet and the problem of resupply. I'll make the story shorter by saying I did a lot of research trying to figure out why male through hikers often typically lose so much weight on the trail and end up looking so famished and beat up at the end, assuming they don't quit first. Despite my research, I had never answered the question to my own satisfaction, I just had a number of theories. Finally, I decided I needed to make a decision, and I decided to hike the AT eating what I normally eat at home, that is, a low-carb, high-fat diet. And I'd do that with an open mind and see how far I could get. Now these days, three years after my successful AT through hike, the whole low-carb label has been sort of pushed aside in favor of the label keto. But in my mind, it's more or less 
keto that I'm talking about with the caveat that here at home I might eat up to 50 carbs in a day maybe even a little more if I'm running a lot that was probably true on the trail as well and I did carry Snickers bars from time to time in my food bag and eat one slowly throughout the day one Snickers bar would still be under that 50 per day carb level I also ate peanut butter which has some carbs I definitely wasn't religious about keeping the carbs in my diet non-existent or being in ketosis or anything like that however after the start I worried less and less about including any carbs because it all seemed to be working out and I ended up finishing the entire 2200 mile trail without ever eating bread or pizza or pasta or rice or donuts or candy other than that occasional Snickers bar the only exceptions to the low carb plan was a beer now and then or Gatorade Gatorade now and then usually given to me by someone as trail magic a little roadside trail magic here you guys started in Georgia? Yeah. and I got a through hiker beer there were also some exceptions during town stops which I'll talk about so what did I eat and what do I think were the benefits first I didn't make a distinction between breakfast lunch and dinner I just ate food no matter what time it was normally I didn't eat much in the morning just like I don't at home you hear a lot about all the calories people eat when they're on the trail 5,000 calories a day or 6,000 calories a day but when I resupplied I was very scientific about the calories I was adding to my food bag so I know my maximum intake surprisingly maybe I only carried 3,000 calories a day so if I was resupplying for a three-day stint I'd buy 9,000 calories worth of food and then stop I had a list of acceptable foods and when I added something to the shopping basket, I'd look at the calories on the label and add them up with my calculator on my phone until I reached that 3,000 calories per day or 1,500 uh, 1, for half a day or whatever. And then I was done. Now, I didn't count my calories in town where I usually ate a lot, so that undoubtedly upped the overall average. But I never stopped in town just to eat, and I didn't even take my first day off, my first zero day, until Damascus about a quarter of the way up the trail so acceptable foods and note these are not necessarily healthy foods but foods I thought I could find easily at some place like a Dollar General and that were low in carbohydrates and high in fat since this included lots of meat products I didn't worry about counting protein calories thinking that if I got low on protein I'd start craving it and take that as a sign and that never happened the food I looked for when resupplying was spam, tuna fish, canned fish and shellfish like clams and oysters would have been acceptable but I didn't carry those because I thought the smell would attract bears. Uh, cheddar cheese, cream cheese, lots of cream cheese which would stay pretty firm for a few days even in the heat in my backpack. Velveeta cheese spread which I add, added to the tuna, the pepperoni, peanut butter, nuts, dark chocolate, Lots of olive oil that I could also add to the tuna. Lots of olive oil. During town stops, I ate a lot of eggs and a lot of meat and a lot of salad and fresh fruits and vegetables. Those are my go-to foods in town. Regret. Coffee. <laughs> this is my half-gallon challenge. <laughs> and I tried to eat a lot, even when I wasn't hungry, because I didn't really have a lot of weight to lose. In town I didn't worry about the carbs and fruit and sometimes if I thought I was looking too skinny I'd go off the wagon and eat something like ice cream for the calories. In the southern states I ate Mexican food a few times without worrying about carbohydrates. And that was my on-trail low-carb diet. Now I want to be very clear I think that if you don't eat like this yourself already before your long hike it just wouldn't work for you. But if your body is already accustomed to a high fat diet, you might see some benefits of a low carb diet on trail that I experienced. No food cravings, no changes in my mood because I was hungry, no feeling weak or lightheaded because I was hungry, no hiker hunger at all really. No worrying about running out of food because if you're fat adapted, as they call it, you can just run for a while on your own fat stores if necessary probably less inflammation on a low-carb diet, maybe quicker recovery, but how to measure that I don't know. 
I did get sick in Vermont, but that was probably some bug unrelated to my diet. All that work without proper recovery is hard on anyone's immune system, I think, no matter what their diet. The only diet-related problem I had was in Maine toward the very end of the hike when I was very tired on the one hand and not interested very much in eating on the other. Seemed like a bad combination to me, so I added flour tortillas to my diet, hoping that the increased carbs would jumpstart my appetite, and that's what happened, and I was eating again. That was in the last 200 miles. And that's my story. Not a plan for you necessarily, just a data point. But I did make it the whole way. I summited Katahdin, and I lost only about five pounds along the way. Today, three years later, I haven't gained that five pounds back, and I weigh exactly what I did when I finished the Appalachian Trail, which isn't something that you normally hear from male through hikers. I don't know whether my way of eating on the trail was the best way, but it worked for me. I should also say that I was resupplying at places like grocery stores, Dollar General, even some gas stations, and these places didn't have the healthiest low-carb options that work for backpacking, or a lot of variety, or say, culinary gratifications. I'm certain that the most common response to this video will be, spam, tuna, cream cheese, forget it but you could technically resupply yourself with boxes mailed to various points along the trail and fill those boxes with a wider variety of better tasting keto foods. That's too much of a hassle for me, but it might work for you. Now, if you're interested in a low carb or keto way of eating, there are many resources, of course. I like the books that, dis that discuss not only diet, but also exercise, like Keto for Life by Mark Sisson and Brad Kearns. If you want to explore some of the science behind keto, Gary Taub's latest book, The Case for Keto, is very good. Online there's a group called uh, the Ketogenic Backpackers on Facebook that might be of interest. And the company Next Mile Meals makes keto-friendly backpacking foods. And that's it. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to answer all of them. Thanks for watching.